What even is a study? Don't worry, I'll explain it simply in this video. If you enjoy digital painting and would like to learn more, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss any of my videos. Hello, my name is Rexo, professional concept artist and art instructor. And I've recently come across a conversation where a person was asking, you know, how to do X, Y, Z. And then another person came up to him and suggested, well, you should do value studies of X, Y, Z first. And it got into a heated argument saying like, well, no, duh, of course I need to do X, Y, Z. I just don't know how to do it and blah, 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 blah. So I just wanted to clear out any confusion regarding what it really means to do a value study of something or a study of something in general and what that basically means for us artists and how we can do more studies to help us become better artists okay so first we need to talk about the definition of values and what that basically means is how bright or how dark a certain part of an image is or a certain part of a painting is so if i say this has a dark value or this has a really low value that means i'm just saying this is this is really dark and if i say this has a high value i'm just saying it's uh close to white or a brighter part of the image knowing how things work in black and white is almost always more important than knowing what color a specific object is so it doesn't really matter if you're colorblind as long as you know what it should look like in black and white you're already like 90 percent there and in actuality um, color theory is only like 10 or 20 percent of uh, your entire painting skill tree other than knowing what values should look like the other part is learning the properties of light and shadow and you know as well as the other fundamentals such as you know perspective form anatomy uh, things like that when you're doing value studies you're basically trying to familiarize yourself with the subject and value studies or studies in general in art acts as the exercise portion of art so as an analogy if we were studying music reading about music theory is the same as reading about color theory and doing value studies is basically the same as playing covers or practicing songs and um, basically that's the execution part of it you know so when a musician tries to study um, notes and scales you know reading about music theory and all that stuff why things sound good um that's like the mental aspect and like the lecture aspect the theory aspect of being a good musician and the other half is being able to execute being able to apply those knowledge and techniques into a performance and executing it well so being able to play a song being able to make a song being able to switch to different chords and stuff like that all right so the first step in making a good study is you need to find a good reference this reference has to have full value range the plane changes are visible and the image is neither underexposed or overexposed i'll show you what i mean in a second the other part is if you're studying a specific subject you need to isolate that subject say if you want to study the eyes for example um, and you get some references of faces you should crop it to the eyes only so that you don't get distracted by everything else so you don't waste time on trying to make the perfect nose or the perfect mouth or trying to capture the hairstyle it just wouldn't help you to have those things so if you can just crop the image of what you need then study that as is instead of having other things in your reference image and being distracted by all, all those other things so for example this is what i mean by a good reference there's a full value range for this um, image so 
you can see there's a highlight and there's a bunch of mid-tone areas and there's the core shadow there's the reflected light and there's the cast shadow and the background is a relatively um mid-tone grayish color and what i mean by overexposed or underexposed is the white area the whitest areas or the pure white areas doesn't overwhelm the picture and as well as the pure black areas the pure black areas are probably over here in this very corner and it doesn't really overwhelm the picture another great thing about this is uh, it also has its accompanied um, black and white version or the colorless version where uh, it's basically it basically has the same form but it doesn't have any color which is really really useful for beginners who struggle with understanding values because sometimes colors are a distraction and sometimes you're fiddling around with trying to capture the right color and you don't capture the right value if you're a beginner and you're struggling with value studies i suggest either picking only black and white references or turning your references into black and white first before trying to do a study of them so this is great it has full value range and you can see the plane changes what i mean by that is um like we can divide this plane as the one in shadow and there's this plane that kind of face over there and there's this plane that kind of faces over there and there's this plane that kind of faces over there so it's much easier for us to deconstruct the planes and see those hard edges and then soften them up later um the most the most obvious example of it is of course a cube so something like this where you can clearly see that there's an edge right here and there's a plane change going from um here to here and also here now so if i were to draw a line it would go like this then since there's a plane change it would go like that same thing here same thing here so you can clearly see where the edges are before we get going what's your latest artwork about let me know down in the comments hi right. so now that you have a good reference it's time to learn the rules on how to do the study or like what your limitations are supposed to be and what are your goals supposed to be all right so the first one is limit the study to one hour maximum i actually suggest you know trying maybe 30 minutes or 20 minutes at first and if you don't like the result out of that one you can go for longer study sessions such as one hour or two hours but for now one hour maximum is average ballpark that if you reach that amount of time in doing one single study you'll have diminishing returns after that so after one hour you're not getting the most out of your study so it's better to get a new reference and do another study of that instead of investing like three or four hours into one study of one specific subject it won't help you as much and then the next is prioritize making a simplified version of the complete subject that you're trying to study what i mean by that is beginners have a tendency to try and prioritize the most detailed areas first or the most interesting areas first and what i want you guys to do is something like this where you can see it's really broken down and even though the eyes are the most important area of the face it doesn't have any more detail than the mouth or the nose or the hair so it's all really simplified and that's what i want you guys to do so don't get hung up on one specific area of the study try to do a rough pass of everything and then another rough pass that polishes everything then another one then another one so you're kind of scanning the entire reference and making changes accordingly and you're not stuck on one specific area because if you want to study one specific area you could have isolated it beforehand so that's what i was trying to say a few minutes ago that you need to isolate the subject so you don't get distracted so if i were to try and study the eyes i could have 
cropped it like this instead so that I don't need to think about everything else but time and time again I see like people do these kinds of studies where the eyes are really well detailed like really well drawn and like you can really tell that they've invested a lot of hours into it but the other parts are still just rough sketches you know so basically the eyes are already a fully fleshed painting but the other areas such as the mouth the neck are still in really early rough stages and i don't think that's a good way to do your studies because that's just going to limit yourself and you're not gonna get as much out of the study that you're doing this is also another good example where um the artist broke down the reference into planes into basically terms that are easier to understand by the brain and he didn't get caught up in like making one specific area necessarily more detailed than the rest of the drawing so basically break it down into one rough pass then polish it and polish it and polish it in each and every pass don't get hung up on one specific part this one too so um most of the detail in the ear goes here but in the simplified version it doesn't have as much fidelity as like all the details are well balanced across the reference or across the study and no one particular area is necessarily more detailed than the rest a good way of putting your reference into like your painting software or where you're gonna study it is just drag and drop it to your favorite application say i want this one so i'm just gonna copy this one i gotta really drag it over to krita so i'm just gonna copy that and paste it or i can just paste it from clipboard then it will automatically create the specific dimensions that it has so what i just need to do is i change the canvas so that i expand the area of where i can paint and i'll have it right on either on the top or like either on the side so um something like this i just change the width to 200 percent so that it extends only to the right side so i don't need to think about proper proportions and things like that especially since this is just a value study so i can just line it up something like this i can just line up the landmarks and don't need to think about the other parts i'm going to worry less about getting the proper proportions because my study and the reference it's a one-to-one -one scale so i didn't change the size or anything because if i change the size say my reference is like this and my canvas is like this i need to change the size of this right so maybe it needs to be something like that instead of copying it one to one which is much easier and yeah that's just something to keep in mind that if you want to copy the proportions exactly or you don't want to fiddle around with rough proportions as much and just want to focus on values you just extend the canvas and put the anchor on uh on these specific sides and then extend it like that or if i want it from top to bottom i can do that as well by changing the height putting the anchor over here so that i can just match the proportions and place lines accordingly and put my landmarks like that you know so it's a much more convenient way of getting the proportions right without necessarily placing a grid over it and you know overlaying or tracing the entire image you can do that in photoshop as well so you don't need to worry about that it just it basically looks like this as well where you have where you have the option to see where the anchor is supposed to be and change the width or height accordingly and in an image like this i would normally upscale it to around 200 percent so that it doesn't get too pixelated when i actually go do the study
I just did a quick study of this image right here. As an example, I just wanted to show um, the next step, which is postmortem, which is basically breaking down what happened and like what went wrong with the study that you made and taking note of it. So the first thing in the postmortem is try and overlay your study on top of the reference that you got. So I'm gonna get this one, copy it, then I'm gonna put it over here and see um, what went wrong with my image. So I'm fairly happy with this area over here, uh, but I could have done a much better job at capturing the shapes over here. So I should take note of that. So I'm gonna add a new layer, use a red pen or whatever you like, and literally just try and draw on top of it. So shapes, this one, I'll just put the check mark over there and I could have used better brushes here to capture the grain and I like how I captured the colors which is great but if you're just studying values don't think about color I just wanted to point it out here I have some slight issues with the proportions so the big areas of shadow over here are lost if you can tell which I kind of like about the original reference it had a really organic look to it and I didn't get to capture that because I was trying to abstract it more but yeah so just take note of it write it down on something else like a notepad or something you can also just turn down the opacity instead of flickering it on and off like this one you can just turn it down a bit so that you can see the differences between the two this is much more apparent for the stuff that needs precision and accuracy so if you're doing a study of an architectural building for example that would be a better way of doing it but since this is a more organic subject it's much easier for me to see the changes by turning it on and off and in this postmortem just ask yourself what didn't you capture in the reference which part took you the longest to do and which part did you struggle with and how can you remedy those problems next time so just write down those notes and arguably the most important step of all is to take your notes so i'm gonna get these notes over here gonna put it on a notepad somewhere and blah 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 and then before i start the next study i go back and look at the notes that i have and put it on the same canvas so say i want to do the study of this one so i'm gonna copy that clipboard then i extend the canvas and then before i do anything else i get the notes i think about the notes and basically i want to have it visible either before or while i'm doing the study so say if i was too busy trying to capture a specific area on the reference and i'm not abstracting it i'm not simplifying the reference enough uh, i'm gonna catch myself doing that because i have the notes ready here oh i have a tendency to do that i'm gonna try and avoid not doing that and basically this is just you trying to catch yourself on your mistakes and forcing yourself to be way more deliberate in your practice and study sessions which will accelerate your learning even quicker which is really helpful if you're if you're a struggling self-taught artist because a lot of times we get to a point where we don't see much improvements over our work even though we're practicing a lot and deliberate practice and deliberate intentions before going into these study sessions is the key to making good progress on being a better artist so i'm not gonna lie this is gonna take the fun out of drawing well some sometimes it's gonna take the fun out of drawing because if it's your first time doing a serious study like this you're gonna struggle a lot but it does get better over time and it's also a good sign if you're struggling because that means 
your brain is trying to create new connections, trying to strengthen the memories of what you have just learned. And creating those new connections actually put a strain on your head, like mentally on your brain. It puts a strain on there. If it takes a lot out of you, it's good to balance this out with stuff that you enjoy doing. So some personal sketches and drawings that don't necessarily need to be polished nor good in any standard you just wanted to draw and draw for fun it's a good way to balance out these kinds of serious study sessions so that you don't lose out on all of the passion and enthusiasm and interest that brought you to art in the first place so don't burn yourself out but yeah just keep that in mind so that's it for today's video Leave a like if you enjoyed it and let me know your thoughts down here in the comment section. And thanks for watching.